Good morning, Restoration family. We're so glad that you're here with us. We're glad that we get to worship the Lord in the house of the Lord this morning. He is so good. He is so worthy. We thank you, Lord, for being our God, our King. God, we thank you for your love this morning. It never fails us. We appreciate who you are in our life, God, in this time and this season. We worship you this morning. Come on, grab your family and your friends as we worship God. Come on. Oh, the higher than the mountains that I face. You're stronger than the power of the grave. And you're constant through the trial and the change. This one thing. Stronger than the power of the grave. Stronger than the power of the grave. God, you are constant through the trial and the change. Through the trial oh, and the change. One thing, Just one thing. thing. Remain. Remain. This one thing. This one hey, thing. Remain. remain. Come on, lift your voice. Your love never fails. Your love it never fails. Never hey, it never runs out on me.
us. His love never fails us. We thank you, God, for your love. God, come on. On and on and on and on it goes. And it overwhelms, it satisfies my soul. And I never ever have to be afraid. This one thing remains. Come on, sing it with me. Your love never fails. Your love never fails. It never gives. Never runs out. Never runs out on me. We thank the Lord for your love. Your great love never Your great love Your love me Your love never fails Never gives Never runs out Come on, it keeps flowing more Your love Come on, one more time Your love never fails Your love never fails Never gives up Never runs out on me Your love, your love never fails Never gives up Your name up. 
must bow and every tongue must confess that he is Lord. This virus must die in the name of Jesus. This virus must bow to the name of Jesus. God, we praise you. Come on. Jesus, you are Lord. Say, Jesus, you are Lord. Come on, you are Lord. You are Lord of all. You are the Lord of all. Jesus, you are. Jesus, you are. Come on, Jesus. Come on, show yourself strong, Jesus. Come on, show your face, Jesus. Right now, right here, Lord. You are Lord. You are Lord. There's no one greater. There's no one greater. Jesus, you are Jesus. Every tongue must confess that he is Jesus. There's no one greater than Jesus. Jesus. COVID-19 is not greater than Jesus. Jesus. This virus is not bigger than our Jesus. Jesus. Come on, he died for this situation right now uh, on the cross. Uh, and on the third day he rose again. Come on. Jesus. Hey, uh, we lift up the name. Jesus, hey, uh, we bow down to the name of Jesus. Yes, God, we love the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, uh, we lift up the name of Jesus. Hey, come on, say, Jesus, see you who are in the Lord. Come on, we're declaring it right now. Jesus, you are Lord. We're declaring it over our lives. We're declaring it over our families. Come on. Jesus, you are Lord. Yeah. Yeah. We're speaking it over our cities. We're speaking it over our government. Come on. Jesus, you are Lord. Yeah. Jesus, you are Lord. Hey. So right now, we call on the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, that you're governor over our lives, God. We thank you, God, that we can rest and have peace, God, that you are Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you that everything right now in our life is bowing to the name of Jesus. We trust in the name of Jesus. We thank the name of Jesus. Jesus, all you've done, everything that you have paid for, we're grateful, Jesus. And so we call on you, Jesus. We ask you, Father, that as we go through this service this morning, God, that you will make your name known, God, that you will show us who we are in you, God, and you will show us, Father God, the authority that we have in the name of Jesus, that everything must bow and everything must confess that you are Lord. We glorify you, Jesus. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you that we are alive and well to be able to praise your name. We thank you, Lord. I pray over the families now that are watching and the friends that are watching now in Jesus' name. And we declare that you are Lord over our lives. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be depressed. We don't have to be afraid of what's going on around us, God. You are a light in this darkness. And we thank you, Jesus, for all that you're doing. We glorify you this morning, God. We thank you for the word that is coming to change our lives. And God, we thank you that you're going to give us the wisdom to apply it to our lives effectively, God. We thank you for what you're doing in our cities, God, and in our governments, God, and in our families, God. And we ask you, Father, that you would be Lord of all, Lord of all of it in Jesus' name. We thank you for all you're doing in Jesus' name. We praise you. Come on, give God some praise this morning. Come on, give God your best praise this morning. He deserves it, God. We are alive and we are well right now. We're able to lift his name up. Thank you, Jesus. We want to welcome you here. We're so glad that you're able to join us. And we're getting ready to dive into the word of God with our pastors, Dexter and Jeanette Howard. We hope that you enjoy it. We hope that your lives are changed. Well, good morning, Restoration. So glad to have you all join us in this online worship experience this morning. That was such a powerful time of Hallelujah. worship and prayer. I hope you engaged in that at home. Listen, we want to take a moment now and do what we call a 60 second selfie and check in. We want you, if you don't mind, to first of all, just drop in the comment section where you're tuning in from. We know people are tuning in 
from everywhere. Yeah. It's one of the blessings, you know, of not being contained in four walls. We get to reach people everywhere now. And so please drop in the comment section where you are tuning in from. And if you don't mind, if you could take a selfie of you and your family there in your home worshiping with us and post that on your Facebook page and then tag the Restoration Place. That just lets more people know about this broadcast, all right? Thank you so much again for tuning in with us. Well, at the Restoration Place, we exist so that people can find a place to belong, believe, and become who they were meant to be in Christ. And we use four simple steps to help people do that. We help people to, to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. Make a difference. We can't wait till our doors are back open and we can be back in the church together. Yes. Okay? So go ahead and uh, take those 60 seconds, all right, and let us know where you're from and, and check in. time of social distancing and I really don't like that that phrase social distancing we do need to be physically distancing ourselves from each other uh, to slow the spread or stop the spread of this nasty virus but human beings still need connection we were That's created right. for connection and thank God for this digital medium that yeah. we have uh, this technology age that we we can really still connect with each other. There's no need for you to feel alone and isolated, okay? And we have several opportunities for you to, to come into our community and connect with us, several opportunities. Two of those opportunities are involving prayer. I'm sure everybody that's watching right now, you have a prayer need, a prayer request. Yeah. We all need prayer. We need to be praying. And so there are two opportunities for you to join with the Restoration Place in prayer and, and, and have your prayer needs met as well. We call that those our weekly prayer line connections. Two opportunities. One is on Monday nights at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. We'll be here on this Facebook page, the Restoration Place. Facebook page praying and then also on uh, Thursdays at 1230 Eastern Standard Time we'll be right here live on this Facebook page play, praying there's there are also some numbers that you can call in as well those things should be on the screen or you can find those that information on our website and then we are happy to announce that uh, we are a church of, of small groups that we call belong groups but two of our belong groups here in the Charlotte area are going to be opening up to, for anybody to join us weekly for these two belong groups. One is Identity Shift, uh, virtual belong group and Bible study. Actually, it's a study written off a book that my husband wrote, and it's all about your spiritual sonship in Christ. It is powerful and so we are opening up that belong group since we're using technology to connect anyway uh, with our belong group we thought we'd open it up to anyone who wants to go deeper in the study of the Word of God concerning your identity in Christ and then also to connect just just to have some personal connection yep. time yep. with people we uh we kind of long for live for Wednesday nights when we connect we love it uh, on Zoom with our group and we thought, hey, we, let's open this up to more people. And so there, there's a link for you to register for that. Once you register, you'll get all the access information. So that's one belong group that you can uh, 
and study you can participate in. And then the second one is something that I'm sure many of you may really, really need right now, financial peace. That's our second belong group that we are opening up for anyone to join, financial peace, okay? And the link to that um, should be in the comments as well, or you can find all of this information on our website, okay? TheRestorationPlace.org. We welcome you to join in those two belong groups and have community um, with us, all right? So, one more thing. If you are in need of prayer, you've got just, you've got something going on um, and you need prayer, then uh, we have a, a prayer email. It's prayer at rclt.org you can submit those prayer requests those prayer requests actually will come straight to me pastor Jeanette all right and our team will be praying for your needs in fact if you have any any kind of need send it to that email address prayer at rclt.org and we are going to do our best to serve that need and help you that's what we're here for all right well, it is time to give. It's giving time, everyone. Still giving time in the kingdom of God. Yes, and I am so excited about an opportunity to connect with God in covenant. Covenant is a powerful thing. Yes, it is. All throughout history, I love history. I'm a history buff, by the way. But all throughout history, in times of famine, mm especially in times of famine. God has provided for his people a vehicle. It's a vehicle that keeps them connected in their covenant with him. There's no other person to better be connected with oh in times of famine and crisis than God. Yeah, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He said the cattle on a thousand hills belongs Are to mine. me. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, it all belongs to him. You know, that covenant says that it's, I, I heard someone teaching about covenant, it's actually about, it's about oneness. It's about oneness. Covenant is about oneness. That's right. And so that means when we come in covenant with God, a oneness is created between us That's and exactly God. Right. And I feel like I really don't have much to offer him, but he has a whole bunch to offer me. <laughs> And, and so that means in covenant, everything that he has belongs to us. Yeah. And, and you know, you say, well, pastor, help make it practical for me. Show me a living example. I'll show you a living example in 1 Kings chapter 17. There was a widow woman and her son in a place called Zarephath. And God sent the prophet Elijah. He said, Elijah, go down to Zarephath. There dwells a widow woman who I have positioned for a time such as this to provide for you in this famine. And listen, little did Elijah know, he didn't know this, she was preparing to cook her last meal and perish and die. And Elijah went to her and he said, woman, fix me a piece of cake first. God will always in times of famine and crisis, he will give you someone or something to partner with, to partner your resources with. And that's what he did with that woman. He gave her an opportunity to partner her resources with the man of God. And the man of God says, fix me a cake first. And she fixed him a cake. And little did she know that it was from that opportunity of giving that God was going to cause her resources to run over wow. and never run out again. Following that up in 2 Kings chapter 4, it was also a time of famine and God used the vehicle of giving. There was a woman, she was another widower and she had sons and the creditors were coming to take away her sons and the man of God, Elisha, came to her and he says, what can I do for you? And she says, man of God, the creditors are coming to take my son and I don't have nothing to pay them with. And he says, woman, what do you have in your house? What do you have available at your disposal? I'm asking you, search around you. God has given you something to covenant with him. He's placed resources in your hand to covenant with him now 
people of God, and even if you barely know God, let me tell you something. Now is not the time to draw back. Don't draw back. Now is not the time to draw back your resources. I want you, I'm asking you, I have the audacity to ask you, like Elijah asked the widow woman of Zarephath, partner with me, partner with this ministry, Take your resources and partner it with the kingdom of God. Yes, yes. Become yes. one with God in your covenant and watch and see won't God cause your resources to overflow and he'll cause you to prosper in this time of crisis. Don't you agree with that? Absolutely. Sweetheart? I know for sure your needs will be met. Absolutely. I know for sure that your needs will be met. Now, in a, in, a, in, a, in a crisis time, it's just not a time to forget to give. You know, I know it's easy when the church doors are not open and, you know, um, we're not present where you can you can even forget to give. I kept hearing that yeah. when you were talking and I just I just I really just kept hearing that phrase. Tell the people, don't forget don't to forget. give. Don't forget. Some of you have just forgotten to give. Yeah. You intend to give, but you've forgotten it. You've forgotten it. It's that one thing because you're not here on sight, a weekly basis. Out, out of sight, out of mind. Don't do that. that. That makes my heart beat for you. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Keep God first, okay? Especially in your finances right now. And go so you can go ahead. Right now, if you need to, right click now. on that giving multiple link. Multiple ways to give. There are multiple ways to give. Don't forget to do it. Don't say, I'm going to do it later. Don't forget, you know, and you forget it. Don't forget to do it. You know how that one little bill, you just kind of, I, I just got a text this morning. I didn't, that, uh, uh, a text that I, I, I forgot to pay a bill. Mm. I, I got the resources to pay it. Yeah, just I just forgot. I just forgot. All right. And this is so this is your text reminder. Don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you should see on your screen right now. Uh, multiple ways of giving here at the Restoration Place. We want you to take advantage of any one of those ways uh, that uh, is convenient for you. Yeah. Uh, if it's text by giving, or you can go online to therestorationplace.org to our website and give via our website digitally. Or you can mail your check in to P.O. Box, P.O. Box 1317, Pineville, North Carolina, 28134. It's in the information. 1317, in the Pineville, North Carolina, 28134. So, multiple ways to give. Go ahead and prepare your tithes and offering to return it to the Lord and to covenant with God. Let's go ahead and make our declaration now. It should be up on the screen at the restoration place. We believe in declaring the word of God. We believe it's a powerful thing when you open up your mouth and you come into agreement with heaven. So let's do that now and let's declare the word of God together beginning now. As, As we, we receive today's, today's offering, offering we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decreased, Blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Glory to God. Praise Praise God. I hope you took advantage of that. And uh, you know what? Sometimes some things are out of sight, out of mind. And that's okay. God's not holding it against you if you forget, all right? Praise God. I'm ready to get into the Word of God. How about somebody? Are you ready to get into yeah, the Word of God? Yeah, if you're ready for the Word, type in, type in that comment section. Type I'm in ready that comment for the section. Word. I am ready for the Word. Just go ahead and type that in really quick. I'm ready for the Word of God. And um, we've been teaching over the last several weeks a series called This Jesus. I have been so super excited to minister this series uh, to the body of Christ, but to the general public at large. I have been super excited to minister this series, this Jesus. I want to take a very quick moment, and as you can see, I'm tag teaming with my bride here, 
and uh, we don't get the tag team often together, uh, but we are tag teaming today. And uh, I want to. Accessories didn't work with the audio today. <laughs> right. And so I'm going to do a quick review. I'm going to do a quick review of where we've been the last several weeks. We said this Jesus, he is the chief cornerstone. He is the chief cornerstone. He, what is a cornerstone? A cornerstone is a stone representing the nominal starting place in the construction of a monumental building. It's something that is essential. It's indispensable. It's basic. Mm. The Bible says that Jesus is the chief cornerstone mm. on which something is constructed or developed. What is that something, Pastor? That something is your life. First Peter chapter two says we are li like living stones that are being built into a spiritual, spiritual house. house. So you are, you are a, uh, that construction that the cornerstone is holding up. You are that building that the, that that's being built on the chief cornerstone we use well you know the bible also says that the whole world is being held up by <laughs> by the, the whole by, world by in, the word i believe yeah. it's in hebrews that says consist. that the whole yeah. universe the is whole being universe. sustained yeah. by the word of his power that's right and so i i love illustrations and if it's okay i think i'm going to step right right in front here i love illustrations here this is the uh, indicative of the cornerstone. This is the cornerstone. This is that essential piece that is holding the whole wall up, that's holding the whole construction up. And so if I was to push down on this, which I won't because I don't want it to collapse, if I was to push, if I was to put any pressure on this, this would collapse. Why? Because an essential piece is missing. But if I put this essential piece in place, it's just one essential piece. But look at the critical importance of this one essential piece. When you put this one essential piece in place, I can press down on this wall, if you will. I can put all the pressure I want to on this wall and nothing's happening. It's not moving. Why? I did one simple thing, sweetheart. I put in place the cornerstone. That's what happens with our lives when we put the cornerstone in place. When we put Jesus in his proper place in our family, in our individual lives, then our lives are not subject to crumble in times of crisis. Crisis is going on all around us, but we must prioritize and give precedent to making sure that the essential piece is put in place in our lives and that's Jesus the cornerstone. Last week we talked about that this Jesus is the only name that has the power to save. We've been reading out of Acts chapter 4 verse 8 uh, and we won't re read the whole thing, but this is essentially talking about in Acts chapter 4, Peter and John and their encounter with the lame man sitting at the gate. Uh, and the lame man was sitting there awaiting some alms. They were sitting there waiting for Peter and John to do something for them or, or to do something for him. And uh, Peter, uh, he answered the lame man and said, silver and gold, I do not have to give you. But such as I have, I'm going to share with you what I got. And he said, and so what I have is I want you to rise up. I want you to receive in the name of Jesus. I want you to receive the healing power of God and rise up and walk. And so after this, after he healed the lame man, they came in contact with the Sanhedrin. And the Sanhedrin or the Sadducees, if you will, the Sadducees, they said, what power do you have to do this, to heal this man? And so Peter began a discourse with them, and he began telling them, I'll tell you uh, what power I have to do this. It is in the power of the name of Jesus, and this Jesus that I am talking about, he is the chief cornerstone. And then he went on to say, he is the only one that God the Father has given the power to 
saved. For his name is the only name. His name is the yeah. only name. Uh, yeah, of any man ever named, the Bible says. Yes. That has the power the to power save. The power to save. And so power in the Greek is translated dunamis, which means ability or might. Power also means exousia, which is the authority or the license or the right or the privilege. Yeah. The name of Jesus has both you all power, watch this, and authority. Power and authority to do what? To save. Salvation is not just going uh, to heaven when you die. I know we look at salvation, we say, if I can just make it to heaven. No, salvation is not just waiting to get to heaven. But salvation or soteria, it's also translated in the Greek, means deliverance preservation or safety and only the name of Jesus holds both it only the name of Jesus holds both the power and the authority in heaven and in earth only the name of Jesus holds both power in the heavenly realm and or the unseen realm and also the seen realm or the earthly realm and guess what the name of Jesus also holds power, sweetheart, in hell. Heaven and hell. Heaven and hell. That means there is no realm that Jesus does not have power and authority. He has power in heaven. He has power in the earth. He has power and he has under the power earth. power under the earth. Yeah. And so this Jesus, what we're going to really be focusing in on today is we want to lift up to you today that he is the finisher. He was the cornerstone. He's also, he has the power to save, but I want you to see him as being the finisher. Everybody, I want you to type, type in the comment section there, the finisher. Yeah. The finisher. So what does it mean to finish? It means to bring to an end, to complete the details. A finisher, you all, is not a quitter. Mm. It's not a quitter. A finisher is a person who continues until all the details of a mission or project are perfected. They don't stop until everything is done that was intended. Wow. That's the finisher. That's the finisher. And Jesus, he is a finisher, not a quitter. He's a finisher. He's a finisher. My goodness. He's a finisher. This one who we call Lord, he is a finisher. Jesus has finished the work to redeem us from sin and restore us back to the Father. Yes. It's finished. It's finished. That, that, that part is it's done. finished. It's over. He finished. He accomplished it all. Look what John 19, 28 and through 30 says. John 19, 28 through 30 reads like this. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, all the details all things have been taken care My of. Goodness. All things were now accomplished that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was <laughs> sitting there and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on hyssop and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, that was the last part of the prophetic <laughs> word that he had to fulfill, drinking from that bitter cup. That's right. He said, it is Finished. It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his, his spirit. spirit. My goodness. It is accomplished. The finished work of redemption to redeem us from sin and restore us back to the Father. It's accomplished. It's done. It's done. He finished it. Hebrews 10, 12 says it this way. But this man, and we're talking about Jesus. This man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, <coughs> sat down at the right hand of God. Why did he, why could he sit down? Because it was done. Because his work was finished. <laughs> his work was finished. The work of redemption was finished. He had offered one sacrifice for, for sins forever. And because his work was finished, that work was finished. He sat down at the right hand of God. Wow. From that time, waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering, he has perfected, perfected. forever those who are being sanctified. Wow. Wow. He finished the work 
of salvation to redeem us. Nothing's, nothing's left to be done when it comes to our redemption. Yes. Not even by us. But there's still yet some more work yeah. to be done. Right. That is being done, even as we sit here, as we speak. Yeah. The Bible says that Jesus gave his power and his authority to those who believe on his name. Matthew chapter 16, verse 15 through 19. It says, he said to them, but who do you say that I am? And of course, Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter and on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you, watch this, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now, what do keys represent? Keys represent authority. They represent authority. He says, I will give you, I have given you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And watch this, whatever you bind, you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now let's look at another verse in uh, scripture in Matthew 28, verse 18 through 20. It says, then Jesus came close to them and said, watch this, all authority, of the not universe, some authority, all of it, all authority of the universe. Has been given God, to me. Has been given to me. Woo. Now go, woo, did y'all hear that? My God. He says, now go. Go in my authority. The same authority that's been given to me. He says, I'm, I'm giving it to you now. He says, now I'm giving it to you. Now go in my authority and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to faithfully follow all that I have commanded you and never forget that I am with you. Hallelujah. Every day, even to the completion of this age. Wow, he's My even God. he's even going to complete or perfect this age. That's right. That's right. <laughs> because he's he the is, finisher. Because he's the finisher. <laughs> he's he's not he doesn't stop until the plan is finished. finished. That's right. Until the plan is finished. So his work of redemption is finished, but what we want to submit to you that he is still finishing some things. Come on. He's still finishing, He's still some, finishing things. some things. Write that in the comment section. He's says, still says, finishing. The finisher is still finishing some things. <laughs> things are not yet as they should be. Come on. In our lives or even in the earth. Come on. In his church. Come on. They're not yet as they should be. And could it be that the finisher is still at work? Finishing My God. some things. My God. Yes, he is. Could it be that you are still a work in process? My God. But he is committed, committed to finishing that work in you. Could it be that the earth is still a work in process? My God. And he is at work to finish yes. some things. Yes. Could it be that we, his people together, collectively, we're called the church. We're still a work in process. We're still a work in, we, we all are working. We process. all, individually and collectively. I believe even the whole earth. Mm. My He's God. still finishing some things. In fact, this is what Romans 8 is saying to us in verse 22 in the NIV. It reads this way, Romans 8, verse 22 in the NIV. In verse 23, it says, We know mm. that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth wow. right up to the present time. We're seeing it right now. Right now. You know, un unfortunately, the earth is not just dealing with this pandemic. The whole globe is dealing with this pandemic. That's right. But, you know, there's there's earthquakes are happening in different places. That's right. You know, uh, tornadoes are happening. That's right. They're forecasting. They've already named four major hurricanes that they're there that are coming. God. through. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, the whole, all of creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right 
up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our, for adoption, our adoption to, to sonship. sonship the redemption of our bodies. So basically what this is saying, if you go back and read this in the message translation, it gives some clarity to what Romans 8, 22 is yeah. saying. Basically what, what this means is these difficult times that we are all observing and experiencing in the world right now, they're actually birth pains. They're birth pains, wow. They're birth pains. Wow. They're birth pains not only around us, but they're birth pains within us. The finisher, y'all, is working on something mm, right mm, now. Mm, 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 my God. Who? The finisher, the perfecter, mm. is working on something He's right something. now. He's perfecting something right now. Mm. My God. Because he's the finisher. We can't see it what he's working on because it's overshadowed with pain and difficulty. COVID-19 is overshadowing what yeah, he's doing. It's overshadowing what he's doing. But he's behind the scenes but doing some finishing work. But he's behind the scenes. He's doing some finishing My God. work. Now we're not saying God, we believe that God is good. Yes. And that every good and perfect gift comes from him. Yes. And yes, that it yes, is the yes. thief, the enemy, the kingdom of darkness that creeps in to kill, steal, and destroy. Yeah. But don't you, but God, we, the scriptures tell us that God God will use what the enemy meant for evil. He has always used what the enemy meant for evil as a part of a plan. Yeah, 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 yeah. As a yeah. part of a plan. He'll use it. Yeah. He'll use it to finish, to perfect some things. Of course, you know, my father was a carpenter. My, yeah. my, my natural earthly father was a carpenter. And so I used to watch him build houses. And so they would get the house built all the way up even bricked on the outside to where on the outside, Ben, it looked finished. Wow. The outside looked good. It looked like you were ready to move into it. But listen, it wasn't finished yet. Oh, my. The last thing that happened wow, wow, wow. was the finishers came. Had to go on the inside. <laughs> Hallelujah. The finishers had to go on the inside and do the detail work. Ooh. To make the house livable on the inside. Make it beautiful on the make inside. Make it beautiful on the inside. Yeah. And that's that's what we're submitting to you. I believe that God's more concerned about what's going on on the inside yeah. than he is about how pretty of a house and how nice of a car you drive on the outside. My God. I believe God is more concerned. Matter of fact, the word of God even says it. It says that God doesn't look upon the outer appearance. Yeah. But he looks at the heart. Yeah. So God, he's perfecting some things. God is perfecting some things right now. Can you type in the comment section the finisher is finishing some he's things finishing some right things. now. Come on. Don't you think he's not involved right now? That's Don't right. you think he's asleep uh, right now? You Just because you can't see on, him. On the boat. Come on. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's a carrot thou not that we perish. <laughs> That's what it, feel, it can feel like sometimes when you're going through things. Oh, but the finisher oh. Oh. He is very aware. Come on. He is a very aware. He is very awake. He is very enthroned. And he is working in ways Come on. we cannot see. Come the on. song says, even when we can't see him, he's working. Oh my goodness. The finisher is working. The finisher you know, I, I, I got to say this from my heart. I realize, you know, I I, I, I always refer back to this last year of my life because it was a monumental year year in my life as I went through just a horrific to me health challenge and as we were studying this message about the finisher I realized oh my god the whole time this was all about me being this was all about the finisher finishing because mm, mm, mm. I looked good on the outside my goodness but the finisher was doing There's a still work, some inside some work things on the inside Come even on. the inside in health wise but spiritually, even in my past, I got healed mm. from some past childhood traumas as I went through what I went through. Mm. I got uh, not just physical healing, emotional healing last year as I was w went through this, this, this crisis. I realized, oh my God, it was the finisher at work in me. He was involved the whole time. My God. Finishing. Finishing some things in me. It was overshadowed by the pain yeah. and the difficulty and the sleepless nights and all of the health and all of, you know, I just, I felt horrible. Yes, yes, okay? yes. Okay, but the finisher, the finisher was working 
on some things. And that, 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 that's, that's helpful for me to, for yeah. me to know, even right now, the finisher. The finisher, Ooh, he's at work. He, he is at work you in know, this crisis. I love verses 28 and 29 yeah. of that same chapter. Yeah. Would, you, would you take a moment and read that? Yeah, he says, and we know that in all things. All things. I, now, now, now if, that all things includes COVID-19. Mm. That all things includes this uh, global pandemic. Getting laid off from your that job. That all things includes getting laid off from your job if you've gotten laid off from your job or whatever your circumstance is. And we know that in all things, God, the finisher, mm. works for good. good. He's finishing some things. For who? Of those who love him mm. and who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined, predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. You see what these scriptures show us? Yeah. In all things, in every situation, the finisher is working. Would, oh, you, yeah. would you just type that in the comment section? The finisher is working. The finisher is working. The finisher is working. Yes, he is. So you say, how is he working, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. Number one, he is working for us. Write that. Write that in the comment section. The finisher is working for us. Yeah. He's working for us. He is providing for us. He's protecting us. He's preserving us. We've even seen it in the midst of a pandemic, a crisis. Yeah. In the midst of it looks like the world's economy is collapsing all yeah. around us. The stock market is lost. Uh, there's no telling how much money. I haven't even looked at our 401k lately. But in the midst of it, sweetheart, the Howards are I'm not looking at it on purpose. On purpose. <laughs> the Howards, the Howards are being blessed financially. We, yeah. just, we just had a blessing to where our child's tuition, uh, most of it, a vast majority of it has been refunded. Yeah, her room and board, to yeah. Her room and board. I mean, and, and there's all sorts of things. We've been able to refinance our home because the interest rates have fallen. Listen, I want you to look into this crisis. Yeah. I want you to face it down. I want you to, I want you to look it straight in the eye. Yeah. And I want you to see what the finisher is doing behind the scenes. I want you from a yeah. practical, I want you from a practical standpoint. I don't want you to get lost in the minutia yeah. of all the negative news. I want you to start looking around you see and seeing, and seeing how you. the finisher is working or see what he desires to do on your behalf. Yeah. If, if you own your home, maybe it's, a, maybe it's an opportunity to come, come Monday, call your banker up and, and, or call some lending institution up and see if there's a possibility that you might be able to refinance your house and make your monthly uh, uh, mortgage payments go down where you can gain money in this crisis. Call your credit, cr all of your creditors and see if they'll, you can, you can renegotiate interest rates. Absolutely. You can even negotiate your payment right now. The finisher, you know, crisis and opportunity uh, uh, can often be the same thing. Come on. Are inter wow, interchangeable wow, wow, wow. with each other. Okay. And so just know in every crisis, the finisher is working for you. I want you to take a moment, just one pause. Come on. And if you, if something just came to mind, I know you've been focused on the bad news, Come on. but, but now you can see from another lens, the finisher, How yeah, he, he really has been you. working for me. Working Type in the comment me. section if something good has happened since this COVID has been going on. Type it in the comment section. Encourage one another. Come on. Type in that comment section. Come How on. is the finisher Preach working to each other. Talk for to each other. me? We come overcome in. by the Put blood of the lamb and by the section. word of our testimony. How is the finisher working for me right now? He's working for me in this crisis. He's protect, providing for me in this crisis, protecting me in this crisis. We had an episode go on. We live with our 78-year-old mother. Yes. His mother lives with us. And she had an episode. On just, Sunday. Uh, on Sunday, we had to take her to the ER. It very could have easily been COVID. In fact, they did test her for it. it they couldn't find anything wrong with Nothing. her. The reports came back. She doesn't have COVID. And, um, um, um. Um, you know, we don't know exactly what happened to her, but all we know is she walking around the house, she back to grandma. She's back to granny all right now. All we know is it was working for her good. All we know is the, fi the finisher was working, protecting. I believe the devil intended something major to happen. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Like a, like a stroke. Yeah, it was. It, 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 and we, I believe yeah. God protected my mother. He was working for he us. He was working for us. See, you got to see the good in bad good. times. You got to see the good when bad things are breaking out around yes. you. Don't focus on the storm. Yeah. Focus on the finisher. Focus. Oh, that's good. Woo! Type that. Type, type that, that type in the it, comment it, section. I will focus on the finisher. Yeah. That means I will focus on the one who is working to perfect. Things. Yes. Don't yes. focus on the destroyer. Focus on the finisher. Fo Ooh, my, my, my. Focus on the finish. He's not just working for us, sweetheart. Yeah. But number two, he is working through, through us. us. Yes, he the is. finisher is working through us. In the, this crisis. The yes, Bible he is. said, it says that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord, who have been called according to, to his power. Purpose, purpose according to his purpose yeah see when God has preordained a purpose for your life it is God's not expecting you to go accomplish it he's expecting for you to allow him to work through you see that's what God does when he gives purpose when God gives purpose and you avail or you surrender yourself to that purpose then God says get out of my way I want to work through you now I want to work through you. You yeah. got to be humble enough to let him work through you. You can't be prideful and arrogant and thinking that it's your education and thinking that it's 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 your intelligence that 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 is getting things done on your behalf. No, it is God the Bible says in Philippians chapter chapter 2, I believe it is, verse 13. It is it says it is God who wills to work and and to cause you to act it is God who is working through you. God says, I want to work through you in this season of a pandemic, in this crisis. I want you to type in the comment section right now, God wants to work through me. Yeah. Not through your neighbor, not through your siblings, not through your coworkers, not through your friend. He wants to work through you. Make it personal. You got to make it personal. You got to see how God wants to use you. There are some people right now, sweetheart, they're making masks for people that don't have masks. Um, we talked to one of our friends yesterday. She's not even a seamstress, but she got a sewing machine. And she says, well, if I got a sewing machine and we got an epidemic or, or we got a crisis and we got a pandemic where people have been asked to have masks and no masks are available to purchase off the shelves, not even off of Amazon, I'm going to take my sewing machine and I'm going to get me some fabric and I'm going to figure out how to make something that I've never made. Listen, might it be that God is trying to help you to discover something that you have never, ever done before in this time of crisis? God is trying to use you in a way he's never used you before. Don't just be sitting up in the house moping because you can't be around people right now. Use this time. Downtime is prep time. Glory to God. Use this time to be innovative. Yeah. God wants to do something amazing through your life. Hallelujah. Yeah, he's using us, his sons and daughters as his vessels. Vessels of authority, of authority and, and power, power right now. He's moving through us to get help to others. He's moving through us to pray his will. Yes. In this crisis, he's not just working for us, he's working through, through us. us. And then lastly, he is working on us. Oh, yes. And this is where is. we want to hang our head today. Yeah, he's working he on us. He is working on us. Say he's still working on me. The I want you sure is working on me. I want you to type that and we got our essential team here. I want y'all to say he's still working on me. He's still working on me. He's still working on Pastor Dexter. Oh, he's yeah, still working on past Pastor Jeanette. If you ever get to a point where God's not working on you, you in trouble. You better be glad the finisher is still at work. Ooh. Hallelujah. That means Latoya, I am not what I'm going to be. Yeah, yeah, we praise God. We're not what we used to be. But as you mature in the things of God, you praise God for what you have not become yet. Glory to God. <laughs> I'm so thankful I'm not what I'm going to be. Glory to God. Yeah, and his, his will is to perfect the character perfect. of Christ. That's what yeah. Romans 8, 29, it says. Abs he is perfecting his character yeah. in us, making us conformable, conformable to his image. Talk to about that, sweetheart. His image that ultimately I, I heard I believe it's Bishop Jakes or some some great preacher say you know we we build things which is what we're supposed to be doing you yeah. know yeah we're supposed to be building things letting God work through us yeah. to get his will done his purpose and plan in the earth through us yeah. but at the same time 
God is building us. So <laughs> while we are building things, God is building us. We are that wall. We, we are, are this. that that from spiritual house perspective he wants to build us and his will for us is that we would be conformed into the image of his son oh, jesus that's christ so, so and that's good. about character yes. that's about real substance right there that's right i personally believe that when it comes to his sons and daughters the church that he's 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 working on the he's inside on and finishing up some Woo. things even through this pandemic. I'm so excited. I really do believe we're being dealt with. I'm so excited. I really believe that we are being dealt with yes. right now. Yes. The believe I'm talking about believers, the church. Yeah. Preachers. Yes. Pastors. Yes. Leaders. Yes. Uh, people in authority. Yes. We, you better believe we're being dealt people with right now. People in the pews. Now. People in the pews. Oh, we're being dealt with To right show now. us that this is not the church. Yes. Do you see all these empty seats? Do you see all these empty seats? This is not the church. Oh, he's so he's dealing us. with us. He's dealing he's with us. Dealing we with us. are the church. Glory yes. to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah, and the character of Christ. Talk about that character, sweetheart. Oh. That be, because Jesus has an image that we see throughout the word of God. Yeah. We the image, what's the, you call it? Anthrop I don't know. Anthropomorphic. So so we're gonna refer to the the image that Jesus represents in two anthropomorphic terms. Uh, a anthropomorphic term is when you take something from nature and you use it to describe a practical thing uh, or when you use it to apply it uh, to a, a human characteristic. And so Jesus, there are two anthrop anthropomorphic terms that uh, is used throughout the word of God to describe the image or the nature of Christ. Yeah, the nature of Christ. Yeah, and this is, I believe, the nature that is, that 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 is to be, um, we're to be conformed to. It's, it's found in Revelation, the fifth chapter, where he is referred to as the Lion and the Lamb. And the Lamb. The Lion and the Lamb. I'll tell you real quick, but go and read Revelation five. It'll, especially in this day with all this going on, it My will God. bless you. It's so blessed me. I can't read it without wanting to weep. Because it, John is John is 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 describing uh, the vision that he had when he was taken up into heaven. He mm. was in the spirit on the Lord's day in prison on the Isle of Patmos, and he was taken up into the spirit, and he saw what is recorded in the book of Revelation: things that the end things are things that are to come. Is wow. that correct? The, Right. Yes, yes. And so in Revelation five is a scene that is so beautiful. In Revelation five, he, he has this scene where there's a throne. Of course, God, the God is sitting on the throne. It describes how God looks and all the angels that are all around the throne. And, and it's a wonderful scene. And then he said he saw a, a, a scroll that had writing on both sides of the scroll, but it was sealed up with seven seals. And so nobody could read what was in the scroll. And what mm. good is a book that's sealed up? I can't get nothing out of it if it's sealed come on, up. Come on, come on. And so I'm sure whatever is written on these scrolls is really important. And so, so in in heaven, uh, the angel cried. The angel asked, uh, uh, "Who is worthy to open up the scrolls? You know, and read so that we can read what is in the scrolls." And nobody answered. My God. Nobody, was, nobody worthy was worthy. Because nobody was worthy. Because nobody was worthy. And so John said, this is, this is John having th this vision. And so John said he wept. Oh, wow. John said he cried because nobody, you mean out of all of these angelic beings, all of this that I'm seeing, nobody is worthy to open up the scrolls? Mm, 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 mm. And then he said he heard an angel with a loud voice saying, Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah <laughs> is worthy My God. to open up the scrolls and break its seals because he has prevailed. Yes. And so John got excited and then he looked and he looked, but instead of seeing a lion, he saw a lamb. My God. Isn't that something? Mm. Mm, mm. The angel referred to him as, he said, behold, look, the lion mm. of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. He's worthy. And so John looked, but it wasn't a lion. A lot, it was a lamb. It was a lamb that had been slain. Mm, mm, mm. It was a lamb 
that had been slain. It wasn't an alive lamb. It was a lamb that had been slain. The exact antithesis of what a lion is. Of what a lion is. Yeah. And so that's why we refer to Jesus as the lion and the lamb. And now, the of course, lamb. the lion, we know a lion is the king of the jungle. He's the top of the animal chain. Mm -hmm. He has the power and the authority in the animal kingdom. And so him being the lion of the tribe, the tribe of, his, of Judah is the tribe that he was from. Him being the lion represents his power yeah. and it represents his authority. That's right. But the lamb represents his humility mm. and his obedience. My and God. here's what the Holy Spirit said to me is that to have the authority of the lion, you must have the humility of the lamb. <laughs> And so I believe at all times that somehow we are being through situations and circumstances, mm. God is, is, is working to conform us into this image. To his image. To, of the lion and or the lamb. My God. The lion or the lamb. And a lot of us as believers, we want to walk in this bold authority of the lion, but you can't have the authority and the power of the lion until you learn to be a lamb you learn to be a lamb we must until learn you how to humble, humble yourself, yourself and become obedient and become obedient jesus was obedient even to the point of death the death of the cross the bible says and because of that God has highly, highly exalted, exalted him. him. My and God. now given him the name that is above all names. And at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue, every will, tongue confess will confess that he is Lord. I wonder as his sons and daughters, as, as his church, just individually right now, I wonder which of these is he working on in you? Mm. The lion or the lamb? Which? One is the finisher. My. Finishing in you. Because he's working. Because he's working on something all the time in us. I wonder which one is he finishing in you in this situation or whatever situation that you're in. As you contemplate that today, the finisher. Yeah. Jesus. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. This Jesus. This Jesus. Say that with me. This Jesus. This Jesus. He's not just the cornerstone. My, 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 He my. is the cornerstone. He's what's holding the whole building up. But he's the only one who has the power and the authority. He's Come the on. only name under heaven. Who has the power and the authority to save. By no other name no shall other we name. call. Shall any man be saved. Oh, thank you, Jesus. But he's the finisher. He's the author. That means he's the creator. Yeah, he's the beginning of it all. He's the beginning of it all, but he's the finisher yeah. of our faith. Yeah. What he started. Oh, he will finish. He it. will finish. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Ooh. He will perfect that which concerns us. He'll perfect us. that which concerns us. Thank you, Jesus. He's perfecting right now. COVID-19. Oh, you'll finish it. He'll finish it. What you're experiencing all around you, he's in the detail. Oh, my God. He's working on something. Oh, God. Might it be that he, he might be working on your family. He might be building something block by block. He's, he's building your family in this COVID-19. He's bringing, he's, he's bringing families together. My God. We're praying together. We're spending time together. We're playing games together. My God. He's working on something. My God. Some things have been built out of pride and arrogance and he, he's had to dismantle. My God, my God. He's had to dismantle some stuff to rebuild. To rebuild it right. Oh my, 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 To my, rebuild my. it right. Oh my. This time, we're building on a solid foundation. My God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Our that finances not be shaken. The Bible says Come our on finances. Now. He's he's working on it. Our church. He's working on it. He's doing something inside of you right now. If you'll humble yourself, if you become a lamb, my God. If you if you'll stop trying to be a lion just for a moment, 
and become a lamb. Humble yourself. Under his mighty hand. Under his mighty hand. And the Bible says, and in due season, he will exalt you. Just like he did Jesus. Just like he did Jesus. God's working on you. The finisher's working on you. What is he working on? What is he working on? He might be working on the lion. Yeah. Take he, on your authority. He might be working on you getting out of fear. Come on now. Woo Letting go of that spirit of fear. Get in your place of authority. Yes. Son and daughter of God, get in your place of authority. My, 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 Open my. up your mouth and roar like a lion. My God. Come out of your cave of fear. In this season, the people of God, we got to be lions. Yes, yes, yes. We got to roar. My God, my In the God. midst of COVID-19, we got to roar. Because there are people all around you that need the lion. My God. What is he working on? The finish is working. I want to invite you Shit, to God, know God, the God, finisher. God. If you don't know the finisher, I want to invite you to know him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. His name is Jesus. Make no mistake about it. His name is Jesus. Yeshua. Yeshua, Messiah, the Messiah. Yeah. Jesus, the anointed one. Hallelujah. Jesus, the yoke destroying, burden remover. Hallelujah. Power of God. Thank you. Not just the power to save, oh. but the authority. Oh, my, my. Hallelujah. He's finishing some stuff in us right now. I want you to know the finisher. How do I come to know the finisher, Pastor? The Bible says that if we would confess, if we would confess with our mouth and believe with our heart, it says we shall experience salvation, soteria, deliverance, preservation, safety. You feel un uncertain? You feel unsafe right now in a time of need? Do you know the finisher? Do you have a relationship with the finisher? If you don't, you need to because he's the one who brings a sense of safety. He's the one who, who brings deliverance in the midst of a pandemic. Thank you, Jesus. You need to know the finisher. Open up your mouth and make declaration with me and declare this prayer. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I repent of my sins. I turn away from my old life. I turn away from my old life. And I turn to a new life. And I turn to a new life. A new life that you have provided. A new life that you have provided. I confess today. I confess today. That you, Jesus. That you, Jesus. Are Lord. Are Lord. And you are the Son of God. You are the Son of God. And I believe that God has raised you from the grave. And I believe that God raised you from the grave. That my sin might be forgiven. That my sins might be forgiven. That I might have everlasting life. That I may have everlasting life. I invite you to come into my heart. I invite you to come into to my live. heart. To live. To be my savior. To be my savior. To be my friend. To be my friend. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, finisher. Thank you, finisher. For Woo! saving me. For saving me. Now feel me. Now feel me. With the Holy Spirit. If you just accepted Jesus into your heart, if you invited him into your heart to be your Lord and Savior, the work has just begun. The work has just began. What do you mean, Pastor? Now he's able to do his most perfect work, to work through you. Now he's working through you to conform you into his image, the image of his dear son, the lamb, the lamb first, don't try to be a lion. The lamb first, then the lion. If you're far away from God, you once knew Jesus Christ, the finisher, but you walked away, you backslidden, I invite you to come back now. The Bible says all you got to do is confess your sin. Confess your sin right now and return back to him. And your relationship with him will be as new today as it was when you first invited him into your heart. He's not standing with a finger of judgment pointing it at you. No, he's awaiting you to come back where you rightfully belong. Yes, 
you have a position and a place in the family of God. Yeah. Come back today. If you're in need of a church home, a spiritual community, but pastor, we're not meeting physically. You still need a spiritual community to be connected with. I want to invite you. If you don't have a spiritual community that you call yourself a member of, that you have joined and connected with, I want to invite you to be a member of the Restoration Place. We would love to be your pastors. Yes, I would love to even pastor you digitally. If you don't have a church home that you're connected with physically, let me pastor you digitally. You can connect and become a member of the Restoration Place by inboxing us right now on the Restoration Place Facebook page. If you're watching this via our Facebook live streaming, inbox us and let us know that I just became a member of the Restoration Place today. We invite you to do so. And then you can go to our website, therestorationplace.org, and you can click on Get Involved. Get connected and it will take you to our growth track where it will uh, help you to understand the path or the next steps to becoming a member of the Restoration Place. If you gave your life to Christ today or if you rededicated your life to Christ, I want you to inbox us right there on the Restoration Place Facebook page and let us celebrate with you and we're going to reach out to you once we hear from you and just help you with some next steps, the next steps you need to take. Or you can go to the restorationplace.org to our website and click on the salvation link. And it'll tell you the next steps that you need to take from here. We celebrate with you. We say congratulations as we get ready to close. <laughs> I'm to as we get ready to close. We leave this broadcast, but we certainly don't leave his presence. Thank you for joining us today for our Restoration Sunday worship experience. We are so excited to be able to connect with you virtually. We are praying for you. Remember, faith over fear. You have the victory. I bless these dear people under the sound of our voice. I pray for you and your family. If there's a person that you know that's been impacted and affected by COVID-19, we plead the blood of Jesus. And we say the blood of Jesus, God's healing power, be directed toward them now. That they would overcome this disease and they would prevail. In Jesus' name, we cover your house in the blood of Jesus. That COVID will not be able to come near your dwelling place. In Jesus' name, we cover this nation. We cover every nurse, every doctor, every first responder, every ambulatory worker. We cover every policeman, every fireman in the blood of Jesus. And we say, Father, protect them now in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. We thank you now, Father. And so we declare today we are victorious and we have the victory in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Join us Easter Sunday for our Easter Sunday morning service. We're going to be coming to you virtually. I can't wait to connect with you for Easter. Bye-bye.